Hey guys, my name is Stan Prokopenko. Welcome to Proko. This is the second critique video on the spine. Um, if you haven't seen the spine lesson yet, go ahead and click the link in the description or just go to this link here. Um, so, all right, let's just go ahead and get started on critiques. The first critique will be for Alejandro Ferreira Hernandez. He submitted these two, or two images of four drawings, and they're actually pretty nice. I like that they are clean and looks like the spine is generally correct. Um, the, the biggest thing that stands out to me, the first thing I noticed was the distance between the rib cage and the pelvis. So you have this distance in here between the bottom of the rib cage and the top of the pelvis that much. I would say you can cut that in half. So his rib cage would start right there. Um, remember that the only thing between the rib cage and the pelvis is the oblique muscle. It's uh, you can think of them as the the love handles, the you know muffin tops or whatever. And you can grab that with one hand. You, you know, the, and the distance that you put in there is like that much on the body. And I can't grab that, right? So let's cut this out and move it down. So it'd be right about there. That would be, yeah, there, that would be about the distance I would, I would put in. Um, and then of course you would clean up that lumbar spine. Okay, so watch out because you did the same thing on this one and same thing on this one and it actually looks like if the rib cage connects here, you're creating that lumbar spine all the way. Yeah, that's too long as well. So all four of them, the lumbar section is just too long. So watch out for that. So I suggest you go back to the spine video and just review the proportions of each section. You know, the, the lumbar versus the thoracic versus the cervical. What's the, the proportion between those three? And that'll help you. Okay, the next critique is for Audi Eagleheart. Uh, let's take a look at what you got. Very nice. Let me see here. So in this first drawing, looks like you did the same one multiple times. All of that looks like the same pose. Um, it looks like all of them, though, have the wrong curvature in the lumbar area. So I'm seeing most of the curvature happening at the top three lumbar vertebrae. And in yours, it's a smooth curve all the way through. In fact, you continue that smooth curve through the whole spine. And that's not what I'm seeing on this, uh, on the reference. And that's actually not what will happen on a real person. There won't be much lateral bending in the thoracic, in the thoracic section. So from here all the way over to here, there won't be much bending. There will be a lot of bending in the top three of the lumbar, and there's going to be a lot of bending in all of the cervical. And so what you're going to see is a curve, pretty extreme in the lumbar, especially at the top portion, and then pretty straight in the thoracic, and then curved again in the cervical. So you can see it's not one smooth curve like this. They're in sections. Each section moves in a different way. So keep that in mind. The second drawing you did looks like uh, just too much curvature in the thoracic section. Right here you can see you put all this curve. I would say it would curve about that much. Remember, the thoracic section mostly does the twisting. It can bend side to side, forward and back a little bit, but most of that's going to be in the lumbar. So you're not going to curve the thoracic section forward as much as you did in this one. On the third one, the thing I want to point out is the sacrum. It looks to me like the top plane is at this angle. So if I was to draw 
a center line from the back to the front, that's what it would look like. However, your sacrum is kind of like this, right? I'm seeing that from your side planes. It's at an angle like that, which is actually tilted back more than the top plane of the bucket. However, on a anatomically correct model, the sacrum would tilt forward more. Like this. Okay, so if the top plane is tilted like this, the sacrum would tilt forward like that. Okay, so make sure it's not, you're not trying to point the, the sacrum up in the same way as you, you're tilting the, the bucket. Uh, looks like you did the same thing in this one. It's, see this line for the top plane and this line for the sacrum, it's, it's tilting back. I would make it maybe not that much. Something like that. Okay. Uh, another thing I'm noticing for the fourth drawing is that you just went too thin in the neck. Um, it's not going to taper that much. I mean, you could see in in this uh, reference drawing that it, it stays pretty thick in there. Um, obviously not as thick as this lumbar section, but I think you just tapered too much. Okay, let's move on. These drawings were submitted by Hodgepodge. Doubt that's your real name, but okay. Let's see. Oh, right, so the thing I wanted to say with these is, first of all, it's, it's too scratchy. So it's, you know, too scratchy for my taste. Um, you could have cleaned them up a little bit, but the other thing I wanted to say is the cross contour lines you're putting on the spine uh, could be a little bit more clear and um, more accurate. So, for example, with this one here at the bottom, looking at this guy, the cross contour line right there that you put suggests that the spine is pointing directly at us, as if this cylinder, actually I fixed it a little bit, okay, almost a full circle. You're suggesting that this cylinder is pointing away from us, almost completely away. It's almost a perfect circle. What it was really doing is it's curving forward just a little bit and actually in this section it's transitioning from curving this way and curving this way so it's it's probably going to be just a straight line or if anything maybe a very very narrow cylinder or very narrow ellipse like this so if you're seeing a little bit of the bottom plane that cylinder would look like this Right, very flattened ellipse at the bottom suggests that we're looking at the flat surface, or not the flat surface, the, the, the rounded portion of the cylinder. If you do a very round ellipse, it's suggesting that we're looking at the cap and that it's pointing away from us. So in here, basically, instead of drawing a circle, you would do something like this, right? In here, for these two guys, you have the right idea. You, the flatness of the ellipse should be about that much. It, we're, looking, it, it, we're looking right at the caps. It's facing away from us. However, it's the angle of the ellipse that's wrong in this one. This one looks good. But this one is now angling this way for some reason. It should be just angling this way. It should be perpendicular to the long axis of the spine. So let's say we have, here I'll just draw it bigger on the side. Let's say this is the spine in that cervical section. Right, so that's this entire area. You got this one correct. But then in here you did this, curving this way. 
since the long axis is this angle, the perpendicular oval would be this. Okay, so just watch the angle and the flatness. Really, when you're doing an, uh, a cylinder, the, there's only a few things you need to make sure you get right. The ellipse of the caps, make sure that the angle is correct, and make sure that the flatness or roundness is correct. The other thing is that you just make sure that the you connect the top and bottom with, with straight lines. And there you go, you got a cylinder. Okay, not many things to look for in a cylinder, so make sure when you draw a cylinder that all those things are correct. Okay, let's move on to Pablo Pablo, no, sorry, Juan, Juan Pablo Lopez Arenas. Man, sorry about that. Okay, so what I wanted to say on these is actually something I see a lot of people doing. Uh, and that's the connection of the lumbar section to the pelvis, uh, or to the sacrum, really. Um, but it should connect to the sacrum, but you're connecting it to the pelvis, to the bucket of the pelvis. Um, and what I mean by that is, well, let's say in this one, for example, the middle one, the center line is right about there, I guess. And so you're putting the connection of the spine right in the middle, which tells me that you're connecting the lumbar spine to the top plane. You're ending it right there. So from, let's say, if we were just looking directly at the pelvis um, from the front, it just look like this, right? It's a bucket, we're looking right at it. You are connecting the spine right there. You're ending it right at the top plane. That's not the case. The spine actually goes about one third of the way down. So if you divide it into three, three parts, it's going to go all the way down here. And it's not going to face up. It's going to tilt forward because remember the sacrum tilts towards the front plane a little bit. Maybe I'm tilting it too much in this angle. And so this spine, will we will see a, uh, an ellipse for the bottom cap. Because from the side, right, we're, we're seeing this for the lumbar section. So always make sure that when you're when you're drawing it through, you go past the top plane. It might look like the spine is no longer in the middle. It might look like it's offset to the left, uh, but you know that's just going to be an illusion. It's just you you know you can draw a line if you want to indicate that you're just extending it a little bit farther. Um, so I'm seeing that being true for all of yours, all six of these. The other thing I want to point out is in this one, you lost the foreshortening effect. You gave it too much distance between the rib cage and the pelvis. And I don't see that as a reoccurring issue with yours. So I think you understand the distance between them you just messed up because of foreshortening. Um, so like let's say, you know, back to the, the, bean, uh, the bean lesson from the figure drawing course. Let's say you got rib cage and pelvis, right? And they're just stacked right on top of the other. If we were all of a sudden to like jump up and look down at these, the bean and pelvis, they would overlap. You would get the rib cage here, and the pelvis behind it, because now we're looking up, and this is the top, let's say this is the north pole of the rib cage. And we would see this sort of thing. All right, so that's what you lost in this one. There should be an overlap between 
the bucket and the rib cage. Okay. The next one is for Nick. Ugh. Okay. Uh, I apologize, Nick. Coolness. Coolness. Um. The the only thing I actually wanted to point out with Nick's is, uh, how. He posted this on Facebook, this image, and then in the comments I told him what to correct. He said, okay, I'll fix it. And then he posted the same thing with the corrections. So he went back and he actually fixed it. He worked on the mistakes. Uh, I just wanted to point that out as an example of somebody that's practicing in the right way. Uh, if you watched my video on deliberate practice, the secret to getting good fast, I talk about how important it is not just to do a lot of drawings, but to do drawings, analyze them, find the mistakes, and then redo them correctly. If you just keep doing the same things wrong, you're not really going to get better. You're just going to reinforce the same mistakes. So it's very important to correct the mistakes, uh, especially when somebody like in the community points it out uh, and somebody that you know, it's trustworthy, somebody you think is, is, is giving you good advice, go and fix it. Um, and, you know, it'll, it'll show that you're serious about it, and it'll help you improve. So, thank you, Nick, for setting a very good example. Rafael Ventura. Very nice, very nice drawings. Um, I think you can push the gesture more. Uh, it's... I think very noticeable in this one. You can see how it really pushes back in here, right? You can see a straight forcing that the upper back this way, and then this really curving back this way. And so this curve, this really extreme curve in here is important for the gesture. What I feel you did was uh, straighten things out a little bit. You see how this kind of just goes up, and then this goes over. Um, so this one, I guess the top portion of yours is, is fine, because it's, it's very horizontal. But then I feel like you needed to push the spine out more, so that it's out like this, and then it can go back in to the pelvis to really show the roundness of that spine. Uh, with this one, same thing, it's the gesture. Your spine looks almost like a straight line, right? This is a straight line from the top to the bottom, and it almost matches your spine. When I look at this, the gesture I'm seeing is like that. Now the thoracic section doesn't curve out like that, it curves the other way. But the gesture, okay, the motion throughout the entire spine is like this. This points that way, this points that way. Whereas your gesture indicates more of just this. Okay, so what I would do is make the cervical section more horizontal. Up to here, then the thoracic will obviously curve a little bit more this way. And then lumbar will really curve like this. And so that will show more of that curved, more dynamic gesture. All right, guys. Thank you very much for joining me. Thank you for all who submitted your assignments. And uh, thank you for all of you participating in the course. Um, I'm really enjoying this course so far. It's, it's very difficult. There's so much stuff to cover but it's a challenge I'm really enjoying and it's great to have such a good community of students to teach this to. So thank you very much for being there for me. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Hey, have you seen my new app, Skelly, the Posable Anatomy Model for Artists? Go to proco.com slash Skelly app or click this button to get it on iOS or Android. If you like this video, don't be all selfish. Share it with your friends. And if you want to be updated about new videos, click this button or go to proco.com slash subscribe.